Hello everyone. Today we are going to see one of the recent and advanced technologies in wireless com communication systems. It is nothing but the MIMO technology. MIMO stands for Multiple Input Multiple Output Technologies. As the name suggests, there are multiple antennas at the transmitter side and multiple antennas at the receiver side as we can see in the figure. Now due to this multiple antennas both at the transmitter as, as well as the receiver side, the capacity of MIMO technology is more as compared to that of previous technologies. As such, there is no limitation on number of antennas used at the transmitter side as well as receiver side. Hence, MIMO technology is better than other technology. There are three basic parameters that completely describe the quality and usefulness of any wireless link. They are speed, range and reliability. Now prior to the development of MIMO technology, the three parameters were interrelated according to strict rules. Speed could be increased only by sacrificing range and reliability. Range could be extended at the expense of speed and reliability. And reliability could be improved by reducing speed and range. Now MIMO OFDM has re redefined the trade-offs, clearly demonstrating that it can boost all the three parameters simultaneously. Hence MIMO technology has found significant importance in telecommunication systems. Now, one of the key technologies that enables MIMO is OFDM. OFDM stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. In this method, the digital signals are encoded by using multiple subcarriers as compared to that of single carrier used in earlier system. And due to this, the symbols get distributed over these carriers. And hence, the symbol rate reduces, the power consumption reduces, the bandwidth increases, capacity increases and ultimately the speed increases. This is something which is new in MIMO technology as compared to that of other technologies. For example, the current WiMAX technology uses 2000 carriers to modulate the signal due to which it has got high speed data rate. Now this forms the frequency division multiplexing part of OFDM. The orthogonal part of the OFDM is these subcarriers are orthogonal to each other and hence crosstalks are avoided. Due to this, inter-carrier guardbands are not required and hence design of transmitter and receiver antennas using orthogonal frequency division multiplexing is easy as compared to that of traditional FDM techniques. It is found that between a transmitter and the receiver, the signal can take multiple paths. Previously, these multipaths only served to introduce interference, but by using MIMO, these additional paths may serve as an advantage as they can be used to provide additional robustness to the radio link. The two main formats used are spatial diversity and spatial multiplexing. First, we see spatial diversity. In spatial diversity, an array of antennas are employed at the transmitter or the receiver end with minimum separation of lambda by 2 between them. A single stream is transmitted but the signal is coded using techniques called space-time coding. For example, in cellularization of a cell site, the antennas are situated miles apart to minimize co-channel interference. In spatial diversity, there is no increase in the data rate. But this can be achieved using spatial multiplexing because here the data is divided into different streams. And then these streams are transmitted independently via separate antennas. If these signals arrive at the receiving end with sufficiently different spatial signatures, the receiver can separate these streams into parallel channels. Thus, it increases the data throughput capability. Now we study the fading introduced as the signal travels from the transmitter to the receiving end. Fading is nothing but the deviation of the attenuation affecting a signal over a certain propagation media. It decreases the signal to noise ratio of the signal and it is caused due to reflectors present around the transmitter and the receiver. The fading is classified as follows. Here is an illustration of frequency selective time fading which causes a cloudy pattern to appear on a spectrogram. Now we study MIMO's capacity on fading channels. Shannon's law defines the maximum rate at which error-free data can be transmitted over a given bandwidth in the presence of noise. This is expressed mathematically as follows. Where C is the channel capacity in bits per second, B is the bandwidth in hertz, and S by N is the signal to noise ratio. Based on Shannon's law, we have still listed out the capacity for different systems. As we compare the uh, four equations, a parameter N is introduced over here, which is nothing but the number of transmitting and receiving antennas. Thus, using MIMO technology, the channel capacity, that is the data rate, can be increased by increasing the number of transmitting and receiving antennas.
Here is an illustration of how the capacity increases and with the increase in number of transmitting and receiving antennas. The lowest graph is for one transmitting and one receiving antenna, whereas the highest graph is, is for four transmitting and four receiving antennas. Typically, a MIMO system consists of M number of transmitters and N number of receivers. Every MIMO receiver can receive not only the direct component intended for it, but also indirect component intended for other receivers. As you can see in the figure, H11 represents fading gain of a channel between transmitter 1 and receiver 1, wherein H12 represents fading gain of a channel between transmitter 1 and receiver 2. All these uh, parameters are formulated in a form of a matrix which is termed as H matrix which is also known as channel matrix. The transmission formula from received vector Y, transmitted vector S and noise N can be given as Y is equal to H into S plus N. In a MIMO system, data to be transmitted is divided into different independent data streams. The number of data streams M is always less than or equal to number of antennas present. In a case of asymmetrical antenna constellation, it is always less than or equal to minimum number of antennas present. For example, a system having three transmitter antennas and two receiver antennas can only transmit two or fewer data streams. Capacity of an antennas can be defined by using Shannon Hartley theorem as C is equal to M into B into log of 1 plus SYN to the base 2. Now further going ahead with why MIMO. Since we know in wireless communication system there is always a need for increase in performance. And MIMO is one of the method of using multiple antennas on receiver and transmitter side to enhance the communication performance. Since MIMO uses spatial diversity, both transmit and receive diversity increases with the reliability of a link between transmitter and receiver. This is important for channel conditions that are noisy, have fading or other otherwise challenges. It can also have secondary effect of increasing the usable range between transmitter and receiver by requiring less repetition of data due to loss or damage across the channel. Increasing reliability is definitely desirable in today's crowded networks and using MIMO antennas for diversity will help us to increase the reliability of a system and thus by increasing throughput of a system by 50% or more. Moving on to the applications of MIMO technology, in wireless domain we have modern wireless routers based on IEEE 802.11n standards. They can be seen in industries, public places, university campuses and at our houses. Next is WiMAX. It is based on IEEE 802.16 standards. WiMAX can be best described as Wi-Fi on steroids, where Wi-Fi range can be extended up to greater distances covering an entire town or even city with a data rate of 1 gigabit per second. Then in mobile communication technology, we have HSPA+. It enhances widely used WCDMA-based 3G networks with data rates of 168 megabit per second for downlink and 22 megabit per second for uplink. Next up is LTE, more commonly known as 4G, which has download rate of 299.6 megabit per second and upload up to 75.4 megabit per second. Now the applications of MIMO technology in wired systems is Gigabit DSL, also known as Binder MIMO Channel. It is a binder model for telephone line based on multiconductor transmission line theory and uses parameter from electromagnetic theory or measured data. Then we have G.9963, which is a home networking standard under development by ITU. It defines power line communication system that uses MIMO technology to transmit multiple signals over multiple AC wires. Now looking forward to the capabilities of MIMO technology in future, as you can see a significant improvement in the data rate in mobile communication technology along with faster mobility is achieved and in the recent technologies like evolved HSPA, LTE and LTE enhanced this can be achieved only by the use of MIMO technology.